Hey everyone, Brian from Madness and Motive. Today I am so happy and honestly quite surprised to announce that four weeks in, we are celebrating 5,000 subscribers to the channel. Now, right off the bat, I want to say that I get a lot of feedback about my channel and people say, you know, I really like your videos because there's no fluff. Well, today is all fluff. So if you're not interested in learning more about me, my career, a little bit about my personal life, um, the channel history, and some future goals, then I would say, you know, hit the back button and go watch another true crime video and get your fix. But for those of you who want to stay and hear all that stuff, let's get into it. I wanna come right out and say a big heartfelt thank you to anyone who has watched, liked, commented, subbed, or even gone so far as to donate. Um, all of that is helpful, it's generous. Um, I find it really kind and it really does help to support what I do and it encourages me and allows me actually to do more of it. So a big thank you to everyone involved in these activities. I wanna zoom in a little closer on those folks who have donated and give them a special thanks. So we've got H. Tally, Nurturing2, Helen Chang, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Atticus, Gwig, Flower Goddess 127, JC Ryder, Ann Trower, and Kay Johnson. These are all folks who donated their hard earned money. Um, they took time out to do that um, and showed their generous spirit. Um, and I really, really appreciate it. I have to say it came as a total surprise each and every time. Um, but yeah, it really floored me. Um, and I thank you sincerely for it. Like I said before, it supports what I do. Um, and it gets me thinking about the future as well. Um, you know, that maybe one day this could be a full-time thing uh, if, it, if it ends up there. So uh, yeah, thank you a lot for your support. So let's talk a little bit about me. I'm not gonna pull the curtain back completely, of course, uh, but maybe I'll, you know, tell more in the future. But uh, first I wanted to share that I got my true crime start as a youth. Uh, I got in some trouble with the law, as you can see pictured here. And uh, obviously I'm just kidding. Uh, this is a picture from middle school. I'm goofing around on a field trip to Washington, D.C. It was about a four hour bus ride. My buddy put me in handcuffs and then never gave me the key. So I spent the whole bus ride in cuffs. Uh, this was not foreshadowing. I have never been in trouble with the law, uh, but I thought it was a funny picture to get us started. These are my wonderful parents. I couldn't have asked for two better people uh, to be you know, my leaders, my caregivers, uh, my teachers in life. Um, anything I do right, it's a credit to them. And anything I do wrong, it's my failure to live up to them. These are my brothers. So I'm the youngest of three. Uh, and these guys um, taught me a lot as well. Uh, they taught me about great music. And they taught me how to throw a punch and how to kiss a girl. We all have a similar sense of humor and are connected in a way that um, I don't think we'll ever find in uh, you know, other people on the planet. This is a recreation of that photo, obviously many, many years later. And this is me as a young lad training my ears, honing my craft to be able to hear Donna Adelson on the hot mic. And now I wanna share a little bit about my career path. So I started out as a musician. Um, I started piano lessons at a really young age, and then I moved into drums and guitar um, and all kinds of instruments. Um, here I am with two of my best friends. Uh, we were in a band in high school and college, and this is us in high school. We're about 16 here. We're in my basement and we are practicing. We still play to this day. Uh, this is our setup in one of my friend's garages. Uh, so yeah, we're your classic garage band these days. And here I am drumming at a show in North Carolina. One North Carolina band I played drums in for a while. Uh, took a trip to Texas. It was a 21-hour drive uh, to South by Southwest, if you've ever heard of that event. Um, it was really incredible, and here we are standing in the driveway uh, about to shut that back door and embark on that journey. And I've also worked in the studio as uh, an artist and an engineer. 
Uh, this is a picture of a studio I recorded in. It belongs to Mitch Easter, who recorded uh, one of R.E.M.'s early albums, if you're familiar with that band. This is a really cool studio. If you look at the right, there's a staircase, and that's leading up to some bedrooms. So you can actually live here, which I did for two weeks. I recorded an album, and then when the album was done recording, I went into the studio and helped uh, mix it and tune vocals um, and you know do some processing and, and engineering there. So incredible experience. I took my musical talents and put them to work as a music teacher. I taught in a private school. Uh, this was my classroom in the early days. And uh, of course, I would always lead class with some electric guitar to get the kids pumped up. I taught guitar, piano, percussion, of course, recorder, uh, to a wide range of ages from kindergarten all the way up to eighth grade. What an incredible experience that was. I'm fairly technically minded, so I switched to a career uh, that sees me using coding languages like Python, uh, performing technical research, auditing, and analysis, and it also involves uh, algorithms, artificial intelligence, and large language models. Obviously, I'm not sharing exactly what the career is, um, but that's what it involves. And then I wanted to tell you a little bit about my interests. So I'm not just a musician and a nerd. I also train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, here I am with Hoist Gracie. Uh, his family is one of the founders of the art. If you know anything about the UFC or mixed martial arts, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is one of the core disciplines of that. And here I am uh, training with him. I think this was around 2009. And this is Hoist in his younger days. Um, he was the winner of the very first UFC. And now, obviously, it's a huge sport um, and it's everywhere. And of course, what is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu if you can't use it to beat up your friends? So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm putting my buddy VC in an arm bar. I'm also really proud to say that I've taken my training and knowledge of Jiu Jitsu and I've passed it on to hundreds of children and adults. And I may be most proud of training women and girls. This is one of my students on the left where uh, she's winning a tournament where she competed exclusively against boys. I also love cats. This is my cat, Summit. She is likely in the background of every single video I record, and every now and then she actually jumps up into the shot. But she's very, very cute, so I let her get away with it. I also love dogs. I don't own one at the moment, but this is one of my fosters. His name's Cooper. I also love to paint. I love old books, old ships, and old architecture. This is my incredible, awesome fiance. And I'm not willing to share too much about her other than Konojo wa Utsukushi des she totemo aishiteimas. And if you speak Japanese, let me know what I said in the comments. So let's take a quick look back at the storied four week history of this channel. So I had been thinking of starting a true crime channel for a few months probably. And the reason is because I spent so much time reading about and listening to true crime content. I figured I might as well just start a channel and, you know, do something with all that time I was spending. So when Donna Adelson was arrested in the middle of the night, I just posted a video. I didn't really even introduce myself. I just posted the video. On that video, I received a comment from Laura Berger, and she said, thank you for covering this case. Dive in. The waters are warm. And that was kind of my say no more moment. I felt, you know, pretty encouraged at the response to the first video. It wasn't huge, but it was enough. And uh, she was right. The waters were definitely warm. Um, there's a lot of material on this case, the Adelson case, a lot to say about it. So I made 14 more videos to date. Um, it's mainly Adelson content, but not exclusively. I do have uh, something on Caitlin Armstrong. I did a Thanksgiving cold case. Um, I did a story on, uh, it's actually a true crime story from my hometown. Um, so if you haven't checked those out, I'd encourage you to do so. Uh, if you're not interested, that's fine too. You might just be here for the Adelson stuff. What's been so cool about having a YouTube channel is that people leave their feedback. Now, that can be cool, but it can also be, you know, really jarring. Um, but what I try to do is read the content and extract anything positive I can. 
This comment was really helpful. Uh, Haystack Sniper said, good first video. Personally, I would remove the music in the back, okay? And at first, I really didn't want to do that, and I think I was using it to hide behind it. So I thought a lot about this comment, and I ultimately decided, yeah, that's great advice. I'm going to go ahead and do it. So thank you, Haystack, uh, for that. Uh, Lydia Lutz, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, also said it might be a good idea to turn my ceiling fan off, which I had spinning in the background. Let's see if I got it now. Okay, so it's off now, and that's because I take feedback very seriously. Um, it doesn't mean I do everything people suggest, but I consider everything, certainly. And um, I've been really appreciative. This is just two examples of many where people have helped me um, think of ways that I could improve the channel. And speaking of that, this is why I like feedback like this so much. I'm striving to be more empathetic in my video creation. So I'm trying to think of my audience, what's gonna help them understand the information, what's gonna help them see it better, become engaged with it more. Things like telling me the ceiling fan is distracting or the music is taking away from it. That's really valuable feedback from my audience. Um, so like I said, I, I take that really seriously. And then I just briefly wanted to talk about some goals. Um, so I wanna get to 10K and I think like maybe end of February might be a good goal. I'm actually going to Japan for pretty much all of January. So that's gonna be tough uh, for me to produce videos. Um, so things might slow down a little bit, but I wanna get to 10K and I kind of like have learned what my channel is. I'm kind of a channel of the gaps at this point. So I don't necessarily chase breaking news or do what everyone else is doing. I try to consider the tapestry of content that you're consuming, and I know you're not just watching one channel. So if all the channels are doing something a little bit different, then it's really good for you as a user. So that's what I wanna do. Um, I either wanna do something completely different than everyone else, or do the same thing they're doing, but in a totally different way. So when you come to my channel, you get something unique out of it. There's there's a value to it, it's not just repetition. So that's kind of becoming my mission statement a little bit, at least at this point, things could change in the future. Another goal is that I want to improve my relationships with other YouTubers. So I wanna give a shout out right now actually to some partners that have been so cool to a four week YouTuber. I'm just a, a baby in this whole thing and I know I've made my mistakes, but people like Fancy Fiction, she was so cool about me using her wiretaps. Um, Katie Cool Lady has been really friendly and you know she gives me shout outs and support. Um, Absolutely Criminal, that's another really great channel who's been awesome. The Society page and uh, Gigi from Pretty Lies and Alibis. I ho hope I'm getting that right. These channels have been great and I'm starting to feel like I'm slowly becoming part of the community and I'd love to build those relationships further and continue to collaborate. And just two other quick goals. I wanna cover other true crime cases. I think for the time being, obviously, I'll mainly stick to Adelson content, but I do wanna sprinkle in other stories because I love telling stories and sometimes you need a break from a case. Another thing I really wanna do as I continue to grow my channel is build a community that's our own, where we can do things like fundraisers and donate to certain charities like you know victim families or something like that. I don't just wanna indulge in talking about true crime all the time. I want it to end up doing something. And I think that would be a great way to do exactly that. Okay, and there it is, just a short video. I had to at least check in on 5,000 subscribers. Like I said, I started this on a whim and I never expected anyone to listen. And here we are four weeks in. I wanted to extend my heartfelt thank you to anyone who's done something to support the channel from watching all the way to donating. It encourages and enables me to do more and I can't wait to do exactly that. So. With that, I'll say one last thank you to everyone and I will see you in the next video.